Hi guys, in this video we are going to cover the NAVTAC radio, how it functions with the HSI. Yeah. The NAVTAC radio is a dual, dual navigation radio. It has a standard VOR DME radio and a TAC CAN radio. It defaults to the TAC CAN radio to confide by the channel and the X or Y as shown here by pressing the mode switch button to switch it to a hybrid VOR TAC hand mode where the VOR is in the standby allowing you to program which VOR you, frequency you want to use then using the transfer button you switch it to point from TAC hand into normal VOR mode pressing the mode button again switch it so it is a normal VOR DME radio. In both modes, pressing and holding the transfer switch for 10 seconds will enter an active entry mode. In this mode, you will be able to actively enter the frequency directly into the navigation radio. Simple, a single tap of the transfer switch will bring you out of this mode and back into whichever mode you were previously in. However, when you enter to exit this mode, you will have lost any frequencies in the standby radio. Primary use of the NAVTAC system is for your instrument navigation. It, is it ties into your electronic HSI and your RMI gauges. By entering an active TAC can, in this case we will enter a sales by tuning the large number using the outer dial, small number using the inner dial, 82. If we needed to actually ch change it from X-ray to Yankee, we would right click to signify pulling out the dial, rotate it using the mouse button, and then left click to signify pushing in the dial. You'll see when we transfer 82 to the active, our electronic HSI has become active. You can see that we currently have a course of 315 programmed in. We are 0.8 of a nautical miles from the aid and we currently have a ground speed of zero knots. You can get force information on the radial simply by moving the dial down below function settings here. Choose what radial you wish to be flying on. The standard deviation needle will display. From right around the outside of the compass rows, you will see that you have a heading bug which can be used to dial in what heading you wish to be flying on or to keep track of which heading you need to be on. Pressing the nav map mode will enter a hybrid map mode. This will show you the location of the current tune aid. line to the aid. This aids in flying where on a, on a course when you can't actually see the aid or if you need to be able to intercept a certain point on that course line. Please note that you will only get an active symbol when there is a DME co-located with the VOR TAC can. This is because without a DME value, the system has no way of knowing where it should put this little symbol. 
pressing the first arrow here will give you a direction to the nearest to the near to the aid. Pressing the second one will bring up the ADF frequency item. So if we tune over here on the ADF radio, the sales NDB, which is on 350, so we use the outer dial to rotate the largest number. The inner dial will change the next number. Clicking will allow us to change the small number. Then swapping it. You'll see we now have an ADF tune and it is pointing to in the direction of the ADF. Pressing the nav button. Direction. Pressing the HSI button will allow us to enter a 120 degree hybrid mode. Useful for if you want, need fine enough navigation. the nav button doesn't do anything at the moment uh, while hitting the ADF button puts you into a hybrid ADF mode in this mode tuning the course needle will allow you to work out roughly your course an ADF. It is not as accurate as using the VOR. It simply allows you to choose a heading you wish to fly from the ADF and it will give you course information for trying to get to that heading. As you can see here. The DG button acts as a declutter allows you to base it, to remove all the excess information and simply give you a compass rose with a heading button. Pressing the DG button again will return you back to whatever mode you were in. Pressing the nav button once you are in the ADF mode will return you back to the normal navigation mode. This covers the basics of the HSI and the nav tag. One other function you should be aware of these two radios is the DME hold used by clicking this button up here. When you use the DME hold it will lock on to tuned frequency in the stand nav tag radio and allow you to use its DME information while also using the localizer from another from another station, such as when doing an ILS approach using a cat can. In this case we will tune 109 decimal five, which is the ILS for Sale. As you can see, we have ILS information. We even have DME information. However, we would not have DME information if we were not on the localizer. We can, however, press the DME hold button. You'll see that it's giving us the frequency as tuned for on channel 82, and telling us that we're a point eight of a nautical mile away from the eight. This is one method of getting information when you may only have a TACCAN co-located with a VOR or a TACCAN and an ILS without both being available. Turn DME hold off is simply a matter of clicking the DME hold button. One thing you should be aware of when using this mode is that you need to have whichever ever frequency you want in the DME hold as your standby frequency before entering the 
fight for it. No, just switch over.